Welcome back, my name is Carrie, and today we're talking about buying raw land for a new manufactured home. Last week I did a video showing a property where in the process of buying just a quick walk around talking about some of the ideas we have planned for the property. At that point we were still waiting to hear back from an engineer to make sure that we could get a septic system on the property because it does not have access to city sewer. Fast forward to today, we got confirmation, so I sent a message to our realtor, Jordan, to tell him we could remove subjects on the property and asked if we could hopefully move up the closing date so we can get to work. I get a lot of questions about land prep for manufactured homes, so I'm gonna use this property as a way to show people every step of the process from raw land to move in ready manufactured home. So if that's something that interests you, definitely subscribe to my channel. In saying that, I've realized that I've already missed a few steps in the process, so let's rewind to where it all started, and we're gonna start right from the very beginning. About two months ago, we started looking at the property and getting rough estimates of what it would take to get the property from the state it's in now to being able to move a brand new manufactured home on it. When a property doesn't have access to city sewer, the costs start to add up really fast, so at that time, we decided to make a relatively low offer. The property had been listed for almost two years, so our thinking was, you know what, they're probably ready to get rid of this thing. Maybe they'll take our offer. The realtor said that sometimes when a property has been listed for a long time, it isn't because they haven't got offers, it's that they're so set on their price that they may not be willing to negotiate. So even though you think you can get a great deal on a stale listing, that isn't always the case. He basically said they weren't gonna take our offer, but did we listen? No. Did they take our offer? No. <laughs> did they even bother to respond with a counter offer? No, they did not. But guess what? That's okay. You can always offer more if they don't take it. You can't offer less if they do take your first offer. We had a couple times where we got lowball offers on stuff we were selling last year and we just say no. That's the worst thing that can happen is they say no. However, if you're in a crazy hot market where things are absolutely flying off the shelf, don't make a low offer because it's just gonna sell to someone else. After our first offer, we waited about a month then decided we really did want the property so we made a better offer, subject to making sure that we could put a septic system on the property. And they accepted. Between the time the offer was accepted and this morning when I messaged Jordan to let him know we could remove the subjects, we did confirm that we can put a septic system on the property and we talked to the city building inspector to make sure there wouldn't be any issues with what we have planned. Before we even made our first offer, we had quotes so we knew what everything was gonna cost. You can do this before or after you get an accepted offer, but I would make sure you at least have some idea before you go out looking so you know what properties are gonna be within your budget. After we got an accepted offer, we also got plot plans of the property done showing the house, septic tank, and septic field. We wanted to be able to play around with different variations to see which one would work the best and then make sure it was gonna fit. What we thought was going to be the best fit actually isn't gonna work. Let's go take a look. What happened was we looked at every possible location for the house, septic tank, and septic field, and ultimately decided that the best location of them all was gonna have the septic field on the north side of the property for a couple different reasons. First, because it would eliminate the need for a lift station. Second, because of the soil on this property, we aren't able to dig the septic field into the ground. So because of the natural slope of the property, that would have been an area where it almost would have brought it up to level. So it wouldn't be a big mound sticking out. And just aesthetically, that would have been better. But let's go take a look. Our first choice for configuration would have had the house the same way that one is there, except on this side of the fence, of course. And then behind that, between the house and the property line, we would have had the septic field. Now, there wasn't enough room, but be the reason it would have been perfect is because you can see the property slopes down almost four feet, which is the height that the mounds are gonna be. So the septic field would have essentially leveled the property, but instead, we're gonna head over here and it's gonna be up in this corner. Luckily, this property is quite big, so there are a few options to put the septic field. And that's just one of the reasons why giving yourself some time to do some due diligence is so important. On this purchase, we had 30 days from the time the accepted offer to the time that we have to remove subjects. We ended up figuring stuff out a little bit faster, but we had that time if we needed it. 
I'm up in the far corner of the property. This is where the septic field is gonna be located. It's still kinda of nice because it's tucked out of the way. The only downside is we are gonna have the three to four foot sand mounds sticking out of the ground, but there's not much we can do about it. We have to put it somewhere, so that's where it will go. Now, if we go back this way, we're still deciding. So that was one of the other nice things about it. It made the decision on which way the house would go because if we put the septic field there, we couldn't put the house across the back property line like we were thinking, but now we're back to deciding whether we put it like that or do we put it along the back property line. I think it'll probably end up still going over on this side, but that decision hasn't been fully made yet. So we are back to making decisions. All we really wanted to know though was that we could in fact put a septic field in because if we couldn't, then the property basically becomes useless. So we are good to go in that sense and we are going ahead with the property. So we'll give you one last look at it from here. So from that far tree right there, you've got the fence as the property line there. Then just on this side of the road, on that side, all the way down into that corner. And it goes quite a bit further than where those trees are. It kind of goes out to a point over there. So it really is huge and is about to undertake a big transformation. Look at that. Looks like we got a nasty storm come in. I'm heading back to the office, do a quick recap of what we've done and where we're going from here. I got a message back from Jordan. We're gonna do the paperwork on Monday and the rest will be history. Up until this point, here's what's happened. We found the property, we got quotes, we know how we're gonna pay for it. We got an accepted offer. We found out that we can do what we want with the property and now we're in the process of removing the subjects. Throughout this process, I'm gonna show you everything that happens, good or bad, because if I just show and tell you the good stuff, guess how much you're gonna learn? Nothing. Because guess what? There will be problems along the way. We just have to figure them out. So was it a bummer that we couldn't put the septic field in what we thought was gonna be the perfect location? Yeah, it kinda was, but the other location will work well too. It's just the way it goes. So follow along, we're just getting started. If you have any questions, please let me know. That's all I've got for today. If you wanna see a piece of raw land, go to a move and ready manufactured home. Subscribe to my channel because it's happening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.